those, those are some things, the peace, the waiting upon the Lord, eternal perspective, uh, the word of God and, and circumstances. When those four things line up, I think you can rest assured that, that you are in, in the will of God. What about praying with other people? You know, you mentioned at the beginning that, that sometimes we, we don't fully understand uh, how prayer can impact us corporately within the body of Christ, but also as a nation. Are there some experiences that you've had that you could share with us about well, how you've prayed with other people that help? Well, you? Uh, let, let, me, let me say that uh, I think everybody needs to have a group of people around them that they're accountable to. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on, on Thursday, I've got a uh, conference call with our board. We're six months through our last board meeting, and we're having a conference call. And I'm going to, when this is a, our conference call, and our meetings are, are very open and honest and transparent. Mm -hmm. And I'll share with them, hey, this is what's going on in me. This is what's going on in the ministry. This is where we're at. This is mm -hmm. the problems we're having. This is the mm -hmm. victories we're having. And, 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 and so I get their input. Mm -hmm. I get their guidance. And I'll give you a good example. Right after September 11th, you know, when the tragedy happened in 2001, I was scheduled a month later in October of 2001 to be in Khartoum, Sudan, in a stadium preaching. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people were upset with me. Sammy, you can't do that. You know, you, you're, you, this is stupid. You know, you, this is not thinking your life rational. Is. And uh, that's true. I mean, rationally, logically, it was not a good place to be. <laughs> yeah. Osama bin Laden built the airport in Khartoum. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, you know, and, and uh, Al-Qaeda at that time was still operating in, mm -hmm. in, in Khartoum. Well, they had, hadn't they attacked the church right before in, that? In, in April before that, they had thrown, uh, the government had actually done that. Yeah. So here I was going in for a citywide crusade, but God spoke to my heart. And God said, I want you to go. I want you to go. And everyone's, you know, I was getting these State Department reports, Americans get out of Sudan and all yeah. this. And, and so... Uh, uh, you know, I had this dilemma, God, is this your will? In my heart, I felt it was his will. Mm -hmm. As I read the word, I felt it was his will. The people there were saying, please come, don't back out, don't cancel. Everything was saying to me, go. But I had one final test, and that was to the men around me, that, mm -hmm. that board of directors, I submitted this. And I said, guys, the Holy Spirit will bear witness with you as That's to whether right. I'm to do this or not. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I'll never forget what they said. They said, Sammy, I want you to leave the room. I left the room. And they discussed. What they discussed, I don't know. But when I came back in the room, this is what they told me. They said, Sammy, we believe it's God's will for you to go to Khartoum. Mm -hmm. However, we don't know if it's God's will for you to come, come back. back. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you're willing to go on that basis, then go. Yeah. You have our yeah. blessings. Well, that to me was a confirmation. Mm -hmm. That was a confirmation. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm saying. Having people, godly, spiritual, mm -hmm. praying yeah. people mm -hmm. around you who can mm -hmm. pray with you. And, and so, because so many times there are these things that, mm -hmm. that we just don't know. Yeah. You know, and I've never shared this with you, but back here at the office, um, I, when you said that, it reminded me that, you know, also our spirits will bear witness with each other's. Mm -hmm. Back here at the office, we were praying daily with, in, in doing something a little bit differently. We, we pray every day here uh, as yeah, a staff, but we that. had invited people to come in. Yeah. And, you know, this is, this is a building, it's no different than any other building, but the atmosphere on those days as we were praying, we tried to link up the time that we would be praying at the same time you'd be preaching over there. So it was earlier in the morning. And I can just remember the atmosphere in this building was different because the body of Christ was coming together mm -hmm. in something that God had already said do. Um, and, and to me, that was just a confirming uh, part of what God does when he helps you understand that that's something you're, you're supposed and, to do. And, and let me back up because I had forgotten about that too. What we did was we, we said, all right, at, at, I think it was an early morning yeah, it was like hour. Six or seven in the morning. Six or seven yeah. in the morning. Our office is going to be open to our friends in San Antonio who would like to come and pray. Also, other churches. churches yeah. Right, you're right. Yeah, and and, and uh, Maranatha, and I Napanee. think there were churches, Napanee, yeah. uh, and uh, Missionary Church in, in Indiana, and they they prayed early in the morning. Mm -hmm. In fact, Pastor Dave Ingbrecht's wife happened to be here in San Antonio at that time, and she participated in the prayer meeting. And while I was preaching in that stadium, people were praying. And then after it was over, uh, Dave Ingbrecht would call me on the phone, and and we would and we'd have a conversation over the internet for those people who had been praying for us yep. to hear how God had answered their prayer. I mean, it was an awesome mm. thing. Yep. It was an awesome mm. thing. We kind of got that was a rabbit trail, but that was a pretty good <laughs> yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. We, we well, went because down. it was the body of Christ coming together to help lift up someone who could testify, this is what God has told me to do, so let's pray together. And I think oftentimes we, maybe it's because of busyness, maybe it's because we're afraid, maybe it's because uh, we don't want to be open and transparent before mm -hmm. people. 
people, we don't allow other people uh, to, to help be our, our Aaron and help hold our hands up and, mm. and pray with us. You, you know, there's another thing, and I, I shared this with uh, David and Shirley on our legacy, uh, Walker, my, my pastor and his wife. I shared uh, on our legacy broadcast, the very first one, we were talking about this a little bit about prayer. And um, th- there, there was something that's very interesting, I think, about the Khartoum situation. And, and that is that when you are needy, hmm. Mm. You pray. That's right. <laughs> you know, someone said, what, what's the greatest prayer you ever heard prayed? Mm. The greatest prayer that I have ever heard prayed was one word. Mm. Help! Help. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, because we, we, we come to the place where, we, we, God, I'm needy. And that's, th- right. that's a part of prayer. That, mm. that, and I think that's what revival. Uh, I'm, I'm working on a book right now. And, and by the way, uh, I'd like to hear from you. You can write to us at renewal at sammytippett.org. The reason uh, I'm, I'm bringing that up at sa- a renewal at sammytippett.org. I'm working on a book uh, on prayer and how God has answered the prayers of people, how we're living and basking mm-hmm. in the glory of the prayers that people have prayed. But next year, 150 years ago, was the last major revival awakening that took place in America. Mm-hmm. And it was a prayer revival. It began mm-hmm. with lay people. It didn't begin with preachers or the, 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 the guys who uh, were in authority, and, mm-hmm. but it began with businessmen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there had been a crash in the business community in New York. And, and because of this economic crash, uh, people began to seek God mm. together. And out of this great prayer revival, God moved in a tremendous way. Mm, right. What reminded me of that was in Khartoum, that's really what happened. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we we, were, we need, knew we needed God. Right. Mm. Uh, my, my grandmother, uh, whom I never knew, you know, and, and one of the great things, and you all know, is, is that uh, I can say for the first time in my life, I love my grandmother. <laughs> now, the, don't throw tomatoes at me <laughs> because it's the first time. But <clears throat> the reason I can say that is, and, and by the way, I've got a, an article on our website about this this week. Uh, but uh, my grandmother had a place that she went and prayed. Mm. But interestingly, she had a child, a son that had died and was buried at that spot. And she mm. would go to the place of her suffering Mm. and cry out to yeah. God. And it's, and, you know, and, and it's a place of our suffering mm. and, that I find that, that really stirs us to pray. And revival comes when, when we do. And you know, the truth is we're, we're needy every day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and, but we forget that. And that's why we live subnormal. Mm. And, and we've, got to, we've, we've got to come back to that uh, nor- normal Christian life. And that normal Christian life is realizing Hey, I need you today. That's right. I need you today. So at the point of hurt, at the point of need, at the point mm-hmm. of suffering mm-hmm. is often when we, we come back to God. And so mm-hmm. c- coming back from that uh, thing in cartoon, we, we all knew that we needed God yeah. then. 